in Chapel Hill uh, seated. He's had that mask on uh, for much of the day and uh, taking it off to visit with us for a moment now. And, and uh, Coach, if I told you uh, during the week or any time leading up to this game going on the road against the top 20 team, you were going to be plus three in turnovers for most of the game, I, I think you would have uh, liked those chances. How did uh, that reconcile with the result here? You know, obviously, when you when defense did a fantastic job of getting the ball back to us, but I think we had numerous opportunities uh, to try to punch something in an offense and make this thing a game, uh, first quarter, second quarter, third quarter. But you know, they're good. They have good players too, and we got to be able to execute. I think the big thing is is that this is the most how do I say it live plays that they've done. I don't know how many uh, North Carolina did, nor do I really C A R E. But uh, it's going to be like this a little bit. I told. I told uh, some people back home, I don't know exactly what we have. Now, after watching it against uh, other personnel, good personnel, uh, we're starting to get an inkling of what we've got. It's going to take uh, probably two more games to really f- figure out who's playing in and who's playing out of positions. And then somewhere around game four, we're going to settle down and get this thing rolling. For those that are uh, sort of eavesdropping and looking in on this conversation that Coach and I always have the first after the game, uh, this is the first time everybody's kind of seeing it this way, Coach, but I know that you get the box score handed to you, and then one of the first things you look at is number of plays run by both teams. Those were a wash today, uh, 73-70, um, which is probably about what you had in mind. But was it the precision of the plays? What, what was the, the missing part here in the connection? What, it seemed to me early in the game, uh, Tommy DeVito was really slinging it, but it, you didn't get much out of it. Well, yeah, those guys are fast, too. They're making up some plays. You know, there's always the calls that go go, uh, either way. You know, you can't get on those officials too much. Uh, You have two punt returns. There have been big plays on both sides called back because of penalties. Uh, You know, field goal miss, field goal opportunity that we could have had. We turned it down for a fourth and one, didn't get the fourth and one. But uh, but the bottom line is, uh, you know, they had a convincing win over us. We've got an idea of where we're at now. I still think that we – we're good, and now we need to go back and work on some things and bring some other people along. You know, we had some drops out there that we wish we had back, and we had some throws out there that we wish we had back. Penalties were a focus. Uh, what's your estimation there? Uh, eight for 60, and Carolina was worse than that. You know, it, they do some tricky stuff. I don't want to get into it, but, <laughs> you know, uh, it's, all, it's all fun. You know, in football, you're going you're gonna, to you're gonna play as close to the line as you can in rules. We're not going to cry about that. I'm really excited that we got a game in, you know, I told the official, I said, he asked me something during the game. I said, I'll tell you what, I'm a lot happier than the Big Ten coaches, and I bet you're a lot higher than the Big Ten, a lot happier than the Big Ten officials. We're playing football in the ACC. We're going to get better, and we're excited. And last thing for me, what are the positives you build on here? You're on the road again uh, next week against a Pittsburgh team that uh, figures to be 1-0. and Well, we go back home, and we lick our wounds. We're, you know, this is – we're not – we're not happy that we lost the game, but we are, we are glad that we got a game in and now we have something to look at versus good competition. You know, we got to make sure that we take care of our alleys and stay as healthy as we can. And then we get to play one of our rivals back in, uh, back in their stadium again uh, next week in the state of uh, PA. So it's going to be fun. A non-quarantine state, Coach. Safe travels. I love that non-quarantine. Thank you very much, Matt. Good luck to you. Thank you, Coach, for taking Matt Park and the Syracuse Radio Network first. Now we will move around the room, and uh, we'll start with Dan Tortora from DT Media. Coach, just what you can say about uh, defensively, what we saw from Mikel Jones getting an interception. Uh, Cisco gets his 13th career, and we've seen some sacks there. Just how the defense played overall. You mean Cisco that uh, was first-team All-American but did get picked first-team on the ACC team? That's Cisco? Yes, that's his guy. Well, he's, I guess he's just okay. He's just another guy around the block. You know, everybody's got one of those guys on their team that doesn't get enough recognition from what they deserve. But I understand. I understand. Thanks, Coach. Next, we'll go to Nico Tamurian from WSDM. Hey, Coach. We appreciate the time. Um, going a little bit further on the defense, and certainly we saw you know, how well they played, especially most of the way. How – I know, obviously, there's no silver linings in a loss, but how impressed were you with that, given that all the issues in the offseason, new scheme, less time to put it in, all that sort of thing? Nico, I think I'm I'm looking forward to see what we're going to be able to put out there next week. I thought that, uh, you know, we gave up some big plays. Let's start with that. There were some big plays, but a lot of that stuff was mental, too. I thought we tackled very well early. Now, these backs are big, and they're good backs, and then they wore us down a little bit. And from the conditioning standpoint, but uh, 
like I said, we those 70 plays for us was the most live plays that we we put in since the Boston College game last year in, in 20, 2019. So we're going to get better. Those guys are going to get their conditioning. They're going to get the, their legs are going to get fresher and fresher and, and take care, take off those camp legs and put on some new pair of legs to get ready to play in the ACC. And again, I think I don't I think they can get better. I think in two to three weeks, you're going to see a better defense. Uh, as long as we stay healthy. I was really encouraged by what I saw defensively. Thanks, Coach. Appreciate that. Mm -hmm. Thank you, sir. Thanks, Coach. Next, we'll go to Eric Columbia from Spectrum News. Hey, Dino. Um, uh, some struggles in the passing game uh, this afternoon. Just what do you attribute that to? Uh, and uh, how would you – I know you have to watch the tape, but how would you rate uh, Tommy after week one? Well, I'm not going to rate him without watching tape because – Quarterbacks are like coaches. They, there's a, they're responsible for the ball, and there's a lot of things going out there that sometimes the naked eye can't see. So there won't even I won't even think about doing that until after I go through the tape. But what I, what I really thought is I thought that the timing was a little bit off, obviously. You know, you had some guys in the end zone that put some balls on the ground, a couple of balls you thrown to guys, and they, you know, they just caught it and fell down. There was a bunch of cuts out there. I saw three cuts from uh, – either I mean this is either offense or defensive personnel with the ball because I can't can't separate it right now in my mind where guys were cutting off their inside foot nobody can cut off his inside foot okay and stay up even the great ones so and, and it's, it's a pop Warner deal where you got to get leverage on the outside foot to make a cut and once we go back and work on these things I think that uh, not only from the offensive standpoint but defensively we're going to get a lot better you know they had some big kick punt returns we had a big punt returns Penalties nullified the two biggest ones on both sides. Either one of those touchdowns could either put the game out of reach early or made it a football game. So we know where we're at. We're going to get better, and we're excited about our next opportunity. Thank you, Coach. Next, we'll go to Nate Mink from .com. And you know, uh, from your vantage point, how, how different was this, how strange was this in a, in a fanless atmosphere? You know, it, it, was, it was interesting. My DFO told me that, Coach, you know, we had the music going at 70 decibels at the 50-yard line the entire game with the volume going up until the center caught the ball, all the ACC rules. But once you really got in the game and you started – once you're focusing on your job, I really didn't notice it. It was like I was so locked in that I really didn't even – the next time I looked up in the stands is when it was halftime and I saw those cardboard things – in the end zone, and I hadn't seen him the whole doggone game. I was so locked in. So it may be it may be different for the fans, and I understand that. But when you're playing the game of football, you better be locked in on what's going on inside those white lines. And I think you get really focused. And I don't think it's as as big as a deal as some people believe it is. Thank you, Coach. Next, we'll go to Adam Hillman from the Daily Orange. Hey, Coach. How's it going? Hey, Adam. So neither Aaron nor Luke had a catch today. You know, I think I think they only had two targets combined. You know, is that something you guys can improve upon? And, and, what was, and is it, was that in the game plan to not target them? Uh, no, it has nothing to do with not targeting. Sometimes teams are trying to take away targets. And based off of coverages and where guys are moving in space, the ball may go to someone else who's shorter. Or there might be one of those throws where those guys were behind them and we were throwing one of those balls and it wasn't connected. So we understand that those guys are, are good players and we're going to try to do the things that we need to do to get them the ball. But I just think it was more of a situation. It wasn't a game plan, such a game plan type thing where they're not supposed to get it. But, you know, the other, the other team gives credit too. They know that those guys can make plays and they did a nice job covering. Thanks, Coach. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Next, we'll go to Jacob Payne from 247 Sports. Hey, Coach, I was just wondering if you could talk about the importance of complimentary football, the defense putting the offense in a position for success and vice versa. Well, I think the biggest thing is that you win as a team as you lose as a team. And obviously, you're trying to put everything together. We had a situation in the first quarter where it was fourth and one. We could have kicked for a field goal right there and I don't know, made it a 7-6 game. But we knew what kind of game it was going to be at the end. And when you're in the red zone, you get an opportunity like that, and you punch one in, you can really get the momentum going early in the game. I thought the defense did a fantastic job. There's no doubt about it. And offensively, we need to score more points. We understand that. And special teams-wise, when you get an opportunity to put points on the board, which is a major, major deal, okay, we've got to make sure that we shield that block, get off of that block, especially when you think when you got a returner like Nakeem Johnson who's got the speed to finish the thing if you don't make a mistake. 
Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. Thanks, Thank Coach, you. we have time for a couple more questions. We'll go to Christian de Guzman from Citrus TV. Hey, Coach, how are you doing today? Good, how are you doing, sir? Good, thank you for taking the time with us. Um, it, sound, it kind of seemed like in the second half, the offense didn't really get going, couldn't get developed as they did in the first half with all the chances and opportunities they had. What was the big difference between the offense in the first half and then in the second half? Well, I, th I thought I saw the same in both halves. It, it comes down to you're going to have to have an opportunity and you have to make plays. When you have a guy open, you've got to make the throw. When the, when the throw is made, you have to make the catch. And then when you get an opportunity to make a big play, you need to finish the play. And I just think there was a bunch of mishaps. And when, you, when you're, as how I say it, on the edge as we are, we need those plays to happen. We need those throws to happen. And that's how we get our big momentum. And we just didn't have it today. Great. Thanks, Coach. Mm -hmm. Thanks, Coach. Next, we'll go to Stephen Bailey from Syracuse.com. Hey, Dino. Apologies if this has been asked already. Um, can you run through – some of the personnel questions that there were coming into the year, coming into the game, uh, the two running backs, Tyrell Richards and then Dakota Davis. Terrell's just hurt. And uh, who was the other one you said? Uh, the two backs, Abdul and Jarvion, and then Dakota. Uh, both of the backs opted out. Yep. Dakota's, Dakota's hurt as well. Dakota's got an alley. We're waiting for his alley to get better. Any gauge on Tyrell and Dakota and when you, you might get them back? Strictly medical stuff, yeah. They got it when they get better, when they give us an opportunity. This, but during the season, potentially, you don't think they would be season ending kind of situations? I do not believe either one is a season ending situation. All right. Thanks, Dino. You're welcome. Thanks, Coach. For our final question, we'll go to Matt Hausworth from WSTM. Coach, I appreciate you taking some time. I wanted to ask you about these uh, two new coordinators, Sterling Gilbert and, and obviously uh, Tony White, and just tell me about the chemistry you guys had uh, in this week one game? You know, it was our first time out together. We're going to get better. There's no doubt about that. But uh, I saw good in both of them. You know, Sterling's extremely aggressive, and uh, I'm okay with that. And we, in that aggressiveness, we had opportunities to make plays that we didn't make. And I think the players understand that as well, that he's going to give you opportunities. He's going to be aggressive. Let's make those plays. And that's what we've got to get back to. Playing it conservative and safe is really a meal that we don't like to eat. <laughs> we like our meal hot and on the edge. And then defensively, I thought we played that way. We just needed to do more earlier so that they didn't have to handle so much less. You know, it's hard on a defense to play that many plays. They understand that our style, they're going to play that plays, play that way. But if, you're going to, if we're going to play the way we play, then we need to score points. And, and that's the key. We have to be able to score points so that we can take that pressure off the defense and get that offense that's chasing us one-dimensional. Thanks, Tim. Thank you. Coach, thank you very much for your time today. Safe travels back to Syracuse. Thank you, Sue.